And we are back on Sportsman Radio. I'm your host, Chris Shanfelt, and I am now joined by former WWE superstar. He's a hardcore legend, Bob Hardcore Holly. Bob, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, Chris. How are you today, man? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. I gotta say, it's a true honor to have you on the show. I grew up a huge wrestling fan and loved hardcore matches, so of course you're always one of my favorites to watch. Oh, shoot. Well, I sure do appreciate it. Thank you very much. And I, I, and I just, I want to say, I just, I thank everybody for their support and stuff like that because, um, I, I just, you know, because the character that you play on TV is, is a reflection of your personality, but, um, and, and, in all honesty, I'm not like the character you see on TV. Right. You know, and I just, I just want to get that point across. You know, and, and I don't want people to think, oh, that, you know, he's, he's hardcore and he's just this and that. And I, I'm truly not. I'm just a laid back kind of guy. Yeah, I, I've, I've had the chance to talk to you a lot through Twitter. Uh, you're at the, the Bob Holly. How's Twitter treating you, Bob? Oh, it's doing great. It's doing good. You know, everybody's been really cool on there. Had a couple of people that, you know, say a few things that were kind of out of line, but I just handled that, you know, very, um, you know, I just handled it and, and the best way that I could and didn't uh, get no, you know, uh, Twitter war with them or anything and just, you know, to ask them, you know, why you got to be like that? You don't even know me. And then, um, you know, they continue their rant, so I just block them. Right, right. Well, Bob, I want to start this interview off by asking you, what made you want to start a career in wrestling? Oh, shoot. Ever since I seen it the first time on TV when I was seven years old, that's, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, and, and I followed wrestling, you know, all growing up through school and stuff like that. And then when I graduated from high school, I found out, you know, I lived in Oregon. I was born in California and moved to Oregon. And then uh, after I graduated from high school, I found out there was a wrestling school in Pensacola, Florida, so I moved to Mobile and ended up getting a job there and then driving back and forth to Pensacola and, and uh, training there. That's, that's pretty much how I got started, and that's all I've ever wanted to do, you know, ever since I was a little kid. Yeah, you're a seven-time hardcore champion and a four-time tag team champion. I know wrestling is scripted, but why do you think you're able to have so much success in your pro professional wrestling career? Uh, you know, I don't know if it's uh, if I've had that much success. I've I've had a great run. Um, you know, I think success. I was I had a 16 year successful career in WWE as far as longevity there but as far as accomplishing a lot of major titles you know i really didn't have much success doing that except for the hardcore title you know and the tag belts a couple times but you know uh, other than that just uh i think i base my success on how long i was there not you know what the titles that i've earned and stuff like that because you know basically uh, you're in, in professional wrestling, you're told to be a champion. You know, you're told to put this guy over. You're told to let this guy, you know, you're told to win and stuff like that. So, you know, I, and, uh, and I base my success on, like I said, my longevity because I did exactly what they wanted me to do. And, and you know, and that's pretty much, you know, you do what you're told and you'll have a great career, <laughs> pretty much. All right, Bob, which, you, which do you prefer, a singles match or a tag team match, and why? I, I like the singles match because then it's just you and the other guy. All the focus is on you and the other guy, and you can tell a great story. Mm -hmm. I like the tag matches, honestly, because at least you get a, you get a rest break in there, you know. And uh, But I, I'm more of a singles match guy anyways I just you know because that way you don't have to rely on somebody else as your tag team partner you know to forget anything or you know because it, it takes two to make the team successful and a lot of a lot of tag teams you know one guy might be getting over and then the other guy's not over so he's got to carry that other guy right. so it makes it a lot tougher in my in, you know in my opinion so in singles, you just have to worry about yourself, and that's that's it. So I, I just I prefer single wrestling. 
All right. You guys are listening to Sportsman Radio. I'm your host, Chris Shanfield, and I am joined by former WWE superstar Bob Holly. Bob, in 2002, you were in a match with Brock Lesnar, and during the match, he picks you up and power bombs you on your neck. Uh, once it happened, did you know that you that your neck was broken? Uh, no, I just knew that something wasn't right because everything just went numb. And for the record, you know, everybody thinks that me and Brock didn't get along and, you know, it was done on purpose and all this. Let me tell you something. It was not done on purpose. Me and Brock got along really, really well. I enjoyed working with the guy, you know, and and so it, by all means, it was an accident. Our timing was off because that, that spot was my idea anyway. You know, and, and and you have people on the internet saying that I sandbagged Brock and all this. Let me tell you something. If Big Show can belly to belly Brock, if, if I'm sorry, if, if Brock can belly to belly Big Show, and Big Show is almost 500 pounds, do you honestly think that I could sandbag Brock Lesnar? I don't think so. So, um, anyway, <laughs> and, and you know, like I said, and Brock and I we get along really well. Mm -hmm. And if he had any animosity towards me, he darn sure didn't show it, you know, because. After the accident had happened, you know, he called me in the hospital and checked on me several times, and, you know, and he, he felt bad, but it was just a total accident on, on on my part, simply because our timing was off, you know, so I don't blame him at all for what happened, you know, it's, and, and, uh, but, I, and then after, you know, after, like I said, after it, it happened, you know, everything kind of went numb. But it, the feeling started coming back, and I thought, you know what, I could go ahead and finish. We went ahead and re did the move again because it was tape TV, you know, so we did the move again, and we pulled it off, and because I was supposed to go for a power bomb, and I was supposed to sit out, land on my feet, and drop kick him. And that was the move we did after, you know, when we did it again. So that just going to show you how much the people on the Internet know about what, what goes on. Right. But... Anyway, so the few days after that, you know, it was kind of bothering me and stuff, and I still knew something wasn't right. So then I went back on the road, and I was in a tag match with Billy Gunn, and I couldn't even throw a punch because it hurt like crazy. And long story short, um, they ended up sending me to get an MRI and found out I had a cracked vertebrae in my neck. Wow, and how, how, how tough was it for you to take that year off uh, due to the injury? Um, well, it was hard, you know, because it just, it, because you like, you, you know, you enjoy what you do, and, you know, when you're off, and especially when you're in a neck brace, you really, you can't do anything, because you just had surgery, so, you know, it sucks, it's nice for a couple weeks being off, but after that, it just, it sucks, you know, the, the recovery went fine, but it's just very boring sitting at home, I'd have rather been wrestling, believe me, you know, so, but, uh, you know, otherwise, and then see when you're out, then there's always somebody that wants to take your place and stuff like that. So you worry about somebody, you know, taking your spot, which I never really had a spot to begin with to lose anyway. So, but you just don't like being off, if you know what I'm saying. Right, and many people didn't think that you would or even could come back uh, after, you know, it, that injury. How did it feel to get back on the ring and prove all the doubters wrong? Oh, I, I just, you know what, I never thought I'm going to go out there and prove these people wrong. I just, I wanted to get back for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to be able to do it for myself, you know. And and so, I, you know, I got back in shape and everything came back and everything, you know, was fine. The doctor, it took me 13 months to heal. And, uh, you know, the doctor really didn't want me to come back to wrestling. But, you know, I did anyway and I did it for myself. And, you know, it was great coming back. It felt really good coming back. And I, I, you know, after being off for a year, I think <laughs> you're, you're, somebody's finally ready to come back anyway. All right, now this right here is from Wikipedia, and as we know, you even said it just a few minutes ago. We can't trust everything we see on the internet. So I want to ask yeah. you: uh, It says here that you were released from the WWE in 2009. Is that true? And if so, do you mind telling us why? Yeah, I, I was released because I, I wanted out. All right. I wanted it because, because, and I'll explain why. It was a mutual thing because I had elbow surgery. I was off because I had elbow surgery. And so when the doctor had released me to come back, I did my rehab and everything and came back, and my elbows were fine. And then uh, 
So the doctor released me. So then uh, Johnny Laurinaitis called me to check on me and say, hey, you, you know, you, you ready to come back? And I said, uh, I said, well, it depends. Do they have anything for me? And he goes, let me check with the riders and see. And because I told Johnny, I said, look, I said, if they don't have anything for me, I said, I, I really don't want to come back because you don't make any money when you're not in a storyline or in the pay-per-views. And, and when you're at TV, it just it really sucks not knowing if they're going to use you or not, you know, if you're not in a storyline. So, you know, and I, and I felt like, you know, I put in 16 years of, you know, not knowing what they're going to do with me day in and day out, week in and week out. And I just didn't want to sit around waiting for a, you know, waiting for a spot. You know what I'm saying? Waiting for something to open up and then put me in it. Because they would just use me as a utility guy to get people over in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I've been there, done that, and I just told Johnny. So Johnny said, I'll check with the writer and see. So he called me back. And he said, they don't have nothing for you, so if you want, we'll just let you go. And I said, that's fine with me. So they sent me my release. And uh, so that's, that's how all that transpired. All right, Bob, it's been a few years. Let's say if the WWE called you and they were going to have a storyline and everything set up for you uh, and they wanted you to come back, what would you tell them? I would say thank you, but no thank you. I'm enjoying my life now because I'm not on a schedule. You know, I just I just don't want to wrestle anymore. You know, after that, once, you know, after... After 2009, when, when when I got my release, you know, it kind of bothered me at first because, okay, it's like, what do I do now? And then it was kind of refreshing that I didn't have to answer to anybody, you know, have, didn't have to be on a schedule, didn't have no dress code, didn't have to be told what to do. You know, it was kind of nice having your freedom, if you know what I'm saying. Right. And, and after and 16 I, years, it's definitely understandable. Yeah, you know, I mean, like I said, I had, I had a great career, you know, and if they called me back and, and said, hey, you know, we got a storyline for you, we're going to do something with you, I would, I would, I would say thank you, but no thank you, I, I, you know, I'm not interested. All right, Bob, I have so. a few personal questions for you. I'm going to start off with, what is your favorite movie? What is my favorite movie? Boondock Saints. Nice, nice, that's a good one. Uh, what is your favorite meal? Sorry? A favorite meal. Like, what? what's your favorite thing to eat? Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, that would have to be... My wife makes really good meals, too. Gosh. That would have to be... Between lasagna and... Um, she makes these great pork chops with these sweet potatoes. They're really good. So I'd have to go with either lasagna or the pork chops and sweet potatoes. Nice, nice. What is your favorite TV show and or uh, movie? You already said Boondock Saints. So what's your favorite TV show? Um, the Office. All right, that, that's a funny one. And last but not least, what is something about Bob Holly that many people do not know about? That I am truly a nice guy. I am nothing <laughs> like my character. If people, you know, when people meet me, for example, there was a guy on Twitter. Check this out now. There was a guy on Twitter, and he made some derogatory comments towards my wrestling career. And I and I so I, I tweeted it back, and I'm like, "Why do you have to be like that, man?" I said, "You don't even know me." And he's like, "God, oh, just lighten up." And then he started in again. I said, "Look, man," I said, "You wouldn't like it if, if you were on TV and people were saying that about you." So I said. So, somehow, I ended up getting his telephone number. So, I called the dude and talked to him. We talked for a while. I mean, this guy was, he did not like me. <laughs> based on my character, based from what he had seen on TV. And now me and him are like really good friends, you know, because he got to know me. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, it's like, you know, people shouldn't judge people just because of what they see on TV or how somebody acts on TV. Get to know that person, you know, because I've been vilified for the whole 16 years. You know, and Chris, I've been doing, I have been doing a lot of, you know, 
trying to let people know, hey, that's, you know, I'm not portrayed like I am on TV. You know, I'm not this per this bad person everybody thinks I am, you know? Yeah. I was. Is that I one reason why you joined job. Twitter? What's that? Is that one reason why you joined Twitter? Oh, uh, no, I just joined Twitter because it just, you know, I just want, basically, yeah, because I wanted to thank my fans and give back to them and talk to them and stuff. But, yeah, that is another reason. Yeah, that you you, you are correct there. And and to let them know, you know, I'm not this freaking monster that everybody thinks I am, you know. And, and um, because the character I played on TV, people have to understand, I did what they wanted me to do. I acted like they wanted me to act. I did everything that they, everything I did is what they asked me to do. You did your you job. Know, they've asked me to do some pretty brutal stuff, and you know, and that's coming from the top, and I did, and I did it because they told me to do it. You know, even when they didn't want me smiling, they just, they just wanted me to act like a, a, a grumpy person, you know, they just wanted me to act miserable, and, and, that's what I was paid to do, and I did it, mm -hmm. you know, and the way I look at it is I must have done my job so well, people actually believe I'm actually that way, you know, so that's all I can say. <laughs> All right, Bob, I have one last topic I want to talk about with you, and that's uh, the Minnesota Vikings. As we know, you are a Minnesota Vikings fan, and the Vikings are having a great season right now. They're 5-6 uh, they're and six right now, and they take on my Chicago Bears this weekend. And just two weeks ago, my Bears won 28-10 to 10 in Chicago. Uh, since the game is in Minnesota this time, do you think uh, the Vikings have any chance of winning this game against the Bears? Well... If Potter plays the way he did last week against Green Bay, we don't stand a chance. Potter gave away that game mm -hmm. last week because Minnesota had the opportunity to beat them, and Potter threw that game away. I blame him for that for that loss. I know it's a whole team effort, you know, but Potter he's the one that lost that game for him. Adrian Peterson, you couldn't ask more out of a guy than what Adrian Peterson did last week. I mean, you know, he, he had, how many rushing yards was it? He, he had like... Over 200. Uh, yeah, almost 200 rushing yards. I know it was up there. Yeah, you know, and, 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 you know, and they didn't even hardly complete any, they didn't complete any passes until the fourth quarter. You know, so Ponder is, I just, think he needs to step it up, otherwise they're not going anywhere this season. Yeah, I agree. Ponder is not having a great year at all. I think it's safe to oh. say that if uh, if it wasn't for Adrian Peterson that you guys wouldn't have five wins on the season. Is it safe to say that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Adrian Peterson carries that team. Hey, like I said, it's a team effort. You know, the other guys have a, have con contributed to the, to the wins, but None more than Adrian Peterson. You know, he is right now, to me, he's carrying the team. And, you know, and, and I hated to see two weeks ago Minnesota lose to Chicago. I hated that. Oh, man, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I know you did. I know you did. And, and, I, and I'm going to be watching the game this week, too. And, you know what, I, I just I have a, I think that uh, uh, Chicago is going to beat them. I really, really do. I just don't think Minnesota's strong enough. Beat him. All right, Bob. I, I know a lot of Vikings fans, and they want Ponder out of there. They they think that he shouldn't even be their starting quarterback. This is only uh, his second season in the NFL. He still has a lot of time to improve. And you guys did spend a first round draft pick on him just last season. Uh, do you think Ponder should continue to be the the uh, starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings? You know, I, I really do because, it, like like you said, this is only his second season. You know, so it's going to take time for him to adapt. And I think he's got potential to be a really great quarterback. You know, he just has to. He just has to really. Uh, he just. He needs. I think he needs to take a step back. I don't think he needs to sit out. He just needs to take a step back and look at where he's at, and and really, really put together something good for that team because. I, I think he does have the potential to be a great quarterback, but you know, look at look at um, oh gosh, Tebow. Look at Tebow. Look how great he was in college. Mm -hmm. You know, and, yeah, and then exactly my point. 
you know, so I th- I really do think Paul, give him, I think give him another year and see what happens. And if he doesn't do it next year, pull the plug on him. Yeah, that, and, that's my opinion. and it certainly doesn't yeah. help with uh, Percy Harvin being out for the rest of the season. That certainly does not help. No, it doesn't. Uh, no, and I and I hope that he'll be back. You know, next year with him. So, you know, Percy Harvin. I, I know Potter is going to be. You know, but unless things change, unless they decide not to go with him anymore. But uh, you know, I just I think the Vikings have a good team. But Ponder has been throwing the games away. You know, that's just my opinion. Yeah, so. I'm, a, I'm a fan of the Vikings defense. I really do like that defense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, 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 got, you got, the defense is doing all the work. The offense is doing all the work. Except the quarterback, <laughs> he's, he's a step behind. That, that's, that's the only thing. You know, if they, can get that, if they can get Ponder, you know, to play as good as the defense and the offense, offensive line and the, the receivers and stuff, I mean, Potter's not even completing any passes because, like I said, last week, he didn't complete a pass until late in the fourth quarter, you know, so, and you cannot win games like that, you know, so. All right, Bob, you're, so you're saying uh, you do think the Bears will defeat the Vikings in Minnesota this Sunday, correct? I, you know what, I hate to say it, I'm a realist, <laughs> you know. Look, I give credit where credit is due. If, if I don't like somebody and they do something great, I give them credit, you know. And, and if the Bears pull it off, I give them credit. Because, see, the Bears are, the Bears are, they, they can't afford to lose any games. Right. And they know that. And the Vikings can't afford to lose any more games. You know, because that race is getting so tight between Green Bay and Chicago and, and if Minnesota can win a couple games, which I doubt they will because they got they got uh, Chicago this week, they got Green Bay next week. So they got two. That, that'll be a whole month of games back-to-back that are really tough for them, and I just don't think they're going to do it. So I, I know Chicago has to win. They have to win, and so does Green Bay. Right, yeah, Minnesota has the toughest schedule from here on out, uh, according to stats I've seen. Uh, Bob, I really appreciate your time on the show today, man. Uh, I must say, again, it has been a true honor to chat with you. Uh, before I let you go, I really want to talk about your book that's coming out April 1st, 2013. Uh, can you tell us a bit okay. about that and everything else that you have going on? Yeah, my book is uh, it's called The Hardcore Truth, How Do You Like Me Now? The Bob Holly Story, and... It's going to be out April 1st on Amazon.com, which actually right now you can pre-order it. And it, it's, uh, you know, it talks about my, how I got into the business, you know, how my 16 years in with WWE and, you know, things, the politics of the business, stuff like that. Um, it's, a, it's a really good read. And I'm not just saying that because I've had other people read it already. And they've really enjoyed it. I, I'm working with a writer. His name is Ross Williams. He's out of England. And we've been Skyping. And he's, he's, he's the one actually writing it for me. You know, and, and uh, so, but yeah, it'll be out April 1st. But you can order, pre-order it, like I said, on Amazon.com. And it's uh, The Hardcore Truth, How Do You Like Me Now? And I just want to say, Chris, too, I thank you, you know, for getting me on your show. And it, it, it is an honor for me to be on your show. And I just want to tell you thank you very, very much because for you guys to want me to come on your show, you know, means a lot to me. You know, so it just it tells me that maybe I did something right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, like I said, it's an honor, Bill. I am Bob, and I, I will be pre-ordering your book uh, as soon as we get done. I mean, I'm interested in it, and I got to say, I hope we could only build on this re- relationship that we've built through Twitter, man. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, Chris. And, uh, you know, if you want me on your show again, just let me know, and I, I will be glad to come on and talk to everybody. Sounds good. Look forward to having you on in the future, and take care, my man. All right. Thanks so much, Chris. Have a good day. All right. You too.